Hi, this is Josh Greeley, the voice of Tokoyami from My Hero Academia, Armin from Attack on Titan, and the Grand Minister from Dragon Ball Super. And you're watching Supernova TV. We are here talking with BKG Cosplay. Uh, now, this this is truly impressive. I don't know whether you can see, but you are lighting up all the way around there. How long did this take to make? Um, roughly about over 200 hours I put into this. Days and nights and 4 a.m. What, what is it about this particular design that made you go, I need to give up my entire life, apparently, to make it? Um, well, Zach Fisher is the actual artist that designed this outfit and he put so many different little details on everything and I really had to zoom in the photos, cut out everything individually and it took forever. So, okay, where is it from? What's the actual design from? So, the design is Deathwing from World of Warcraft, but it was a Lady Deathwing design of the original male character. And, and are you a big Warcraft player or did you just love the design? Um, I used to play a lot of World of Warcraft and Deathwing was my favourite out of all the dragons so I definitely had to do something and then I found this design and I fell in love with it. Okay, so what was the most difficult part because there is so much detail, so many, and it, so many lights. Yeah, um, the LEDs were pretty tough but the shoulder pieces were probably my hardest part because trying to keep them up was a lot of weight so it was a lot of work. So what's most of it made out of? Uh, most of it is made out of EVA foam, so mats that yep. I, car mats and stuff like that. And Warbler was pretty much the entire outfit. It's it is so impressive. Thank uh, you. I, tell us about the weapon. Is what's that mostly made out of? Um, this was actually just an old tube from when we did the wallpaper at my house. <laughs> this is a bit down here, um, and the rest was just doubled up Warbler and EVA foam as well. Very cool. And what's next on the list for you? What do you want to do next other than sleep? Definitely sleep, but I'll probably try and look at some more of Zach Fisher's designs because he's done some more dragons and I do want to do the other ones as well. So, Very more sleep. Cool. More yeah. sleep, is, nice. sleep yeah. is good. Sleep is a friend of ours. Yeah. Thank you so much. We are here with Josh Greeley. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. Awesome. Now, First of all, a very happy birthday to you. Thank you. For yesterday, <laughs> Australian time, but today, mm -hmm. American time. Yep, it's like 8 p.m. back home. Yes, so, so yeah. we can Still keep the party birthday. rolling on. Yes. Definitely. I love now, it. Y'all have been so sweet, too. <laughs> they, gave me, they gave me a cake. <laughs> it was adorable. Was it a good cake? It was an amazing cake. It was all chocolate and it was like frozen and surrounded by these little hard vanilla chocolate, like white chocolate and dark chocolate, like squares, like this perimeter of chocolate and, and now strawberries. Now I'm upset I wasn't invited. Hey, I've got some still up in the green room. You're welcome to some. I'm we are, happy to We're share. stopping the interview now. We're going to go get cake. Bye. I went and looked at your IMDB profile mm -hmm. and it says Never that your look at first... IMDb. <laughs> <laughs> well, your first voice acting credit is from way back in 1972. Uh-huh. And I, I think that makes you over 50? Yeah, no, I'm 33. Towards 60. Okay, so how does that work? Because uh, w the show in question is, is Gachaman. Yep. It, was, it came out in 1970 in Japan, but ADV Films in Houston, Texas did not bring it over to dub it Ah. Until 2000, like okay. 2004, 2005, yeah. um, it had had a run in the states two different times as uh, Battle of the Planets and G Force in okay. the 80s, yep. and like uh, they had been uh, completely like chopped up, and and the story was like retold and revamped and everything mm -hmm. to kind of fit you know this this American storytelling, and they, they chopped it down from 100, 108 episodes to 55. And yeah, so like we, this was the first time it was ever going to be released as just Gachamon, the original, the original thing, uncut, yeah. everything, all 108 episodes. And then we, it was it was one of my first. Yeah, it was really it was the show I cut my teeth on. Amazing. Uh, and yeah, but IMDb, <laughs> who apparently doesn't really do their research, no. uh, only put it like just put the yeah. I've been the I original. was born in 85, but I started in 79. Which is a it's an accomplishment in itself. I, let's I try. be honest. Yes. Yeah. I wanted but, to do something special. <laughs> well since I then travel. you've worked on video games as well as anime mm -hmm. dubs but you've also written scripts yes, for anime, correct? Yes. I was an ADR script writer for about 10 years. And what does that involve? Basically it just uh, we are given the translate well, what is essentially the subtitle script 
for an anim an episode of, of any given anime, along with you know the translation and notes from the original creator. And uh, our job is to go through and every bit of nuance and information and character that is lost when they have to truncate for mm -hmm. the for the sake of the subtitles fitting on the screen, we bring back. And, and we try to bring that back uh, with the dub. To, to like, So I'm not only are we kind of, re not necessarily rewriting, we're not changing information, we're not changing any, the story. like the story or, or misrepresenting characters or mm -hmm. anything like that, but what we are doing is A, uh, matching, uh, making sure that the the words match the pre-animated mouth flaps. movements. Yeah, match yeah. the flaps. <laughs> um, and the second thing that we're doing is being caretakers. Mm -hmm. You know, like we're we're uh, we're we also we want to make sure that uh, someone in the states, if uh, Mike McFarland puts it the best way, I think, if someone in the states meets someone from Japan and they talk about an episode of, let's say, Attack on Titan. We want them to be able to talk about and, and ha have had the exact same emotional experience. Ah, uh, okay. Uh, in, in, in both ways. So, uh, but we will change the dialogue to more reflect an English-speaking audience, mm -hmm. like, and, and also the culture, because there's gonna be some things that just don't cross. So you have to kind of make, you know, give, bring a cultural equivalent into it to, so that they at least get the idea. Um, and that's pretty much what we do yeah. day in and day out. Uh, yeah, I did that for about 10 years on top of doing voice work and it was, it was my bread and butter. Does it start a with a translation mm -hmm. from Japanese to English and then mm -hmm. you take it and it's, alter it? Yeah, it starts, well, it starts with our, a team of translators actually doing the translation and working with the okay. creators and then they tra pass that on to the subtitled team and do their work and then we get the subtitle script plus translator notes. Yeah. Uh, and we work from there. Yeah. And yeah, so it's... Yeah, that's the that's my answer. It's always interesting to see mm -hmm. um, how little gets lost in translation mm -hmm. between the Japanese to the English dub, yeah. and how much story is kept there. There's mm -hmm. obviously a lot that goes into it, and I never really yeah. thought about it before oh, yeah. I saw that you had done a lot of writing for it. Because mm -hmm. you kind of look at it and you think it's already been written. Yeah. Correct. Right. Yeah. It's and I I kind of look at it as you know you know like every every. Have you ever read like uh, an, a let's like Dante's Inferno? Mm. You know, anytime you've ever read that in English, you're you're dealing with someone who is well versed in the in the original language it was written in, and you know the period of the time what these things are supposed to mean, mm. and has gone through that entire book and then published it with their translation. Uh, and it'll all it'll always be accompanied with like notes from the translator and, and stuff like that. We don't really get that that novelty when doing dubs because we can't legally we can't just put a whole bunch of text information on screen and be like yeah. this is what this means and this is what that means and that sign over there this is what that means and yep. at the same time also have dialogue happening either in subtitle or dub um, so we have to try to figure out little tricks or little ways where if if uh, a line in the Japanese is is really so is really short but they're actually conveying a lot more information and in English we can't necessarily portray that same amount of information in that small amount of time we have to try to figure out ways of either bringing that information in from another character in the same scene or uh, or just getting it sometimes like I, I've spent the better part of a day on just one line sometimes trying to figure out how the hell am I going to have this character say it sound like themselves and also portray this information inside these stupid flaps <laughs> and it just becomes the uh, that that really is the challenge and the grind of it uh, it's uh, not necessarily paint by numbers but it, it's close. It, yeah it's kind of close a similar idea a, a similar idea yeah. very much so so out of your more than 100 almost 200 correct different Th roles 300 300 300, yeah, 300 voice roles uh, 200 some odd shows voicing yeah and of uh, somewhere in the realm of five to six hundred episodes written do you then, have a favorite line that sticks with you one line one one line, line out of 15 years <laughs> okay um hmm. probably the, one of the most recent would be uh Issei from High School DxD. Oh yeah, this kid, he's one of those characters that I I we get to improv mm -hmm. 
that I actually get, kind of get to improv with. So uh, the this one line that we <laughs> uh, this one line that we had uh, uh, we could be very topical with our mm -hmm. humor. And, and uh, Issei, after uh, all of his friends have been beaten up by this hero faction, uh, he says to them, he's going through, you could see his power building up like you do in anime, and, mm -hmm, and his, mm -hmm. his armor is getting bigger and it's more, and more powerful, and he's sitting there and he says, you made me feel weak, like there was nothing I could do. Now I'm gonna make you eat those feelings like a teen doing the Tide Pod Challenge. <laughs> <laughs> That was so intense and then went somewhere completely uh, different. Uh, I love it. Well, thank you so much for yeah. joining us here at Supernova TV. It's thank been you lovely very much. having you. It's a great time so far and looking forward to the rest of the weekend.